Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to episode 6 of my KSP campaign. Since the last video, um, I, a couple of mods came up with some upgrades, uh, so I thought I would install those upgrades, and as well, I, in an effort to get Raster Prop Monitor working correctly, I stepped down from the aggressive version of act Active Texture Management to the normal version of Active Texture Management, but as you can see, I'm still having some issues with textures on the buttons. I'm not quite sure what that's about, but what was even a weirder side effect oh, is man. that I lost almost all of my contracts. Almost all my contracts but one disappeared. I have really no idea why that happened. I didn't lose any money. It's not like they were, um, you know, that, that, that they were marked as failed and I lost money because of it. I have the exact same amount of money and reputation and science that I had at the end of the last video. Um, but all of them but one is gone, and even the archive is gone. So I'll have to repopulate my, uh, my contracts with, uh, pick six new ones here that, that weren't there before. Kind of bummed about that because I actually had designed, uh, some, uh, uh kind of this Quasimodo rocket that, uh, that was going to knock off like four of these testing contracts, but uh, well, those testing contracts are now gone. What can you do? But I still have only a few hours left until my launch pad finishes upgrading. Uh, this is something I'm looking forward to because it will lift the 18 ton vessel limit that I have on the launch pad and uh, pump it up to... What does it pump up to? It's some ridiculous. The, the jump is, is quite substantial here. Let's see. What What's my new... Uh, I can get up to 140 tons from 18 to 140 tons. Yeah, that's a bit of a jump. And with that, let's get over to the VAB and build something to knock off some of these contracts. You can see I'm still having some texture issues. I'll have to sort those out. But these are the four contracts I would like to do. They got the test to stack the coupler at the launch site. That will be easy to do. Perform, oh, perform visual surveys. I don't want to do that. So three, <laughs> three contracts. I want to test the LV909 Terrier liquid fuel engine while in a suborbital trajectory. And I want to orbit Kerbin. So I'm going to try and build a vessel that will knock off all three of these. We'll call this one the Kerstock 2. So this will be hopefully my first vessel that will get into orbit. We're going to try and do something a little different with this vessel than I've done with my previous vessels and try to build myself a little orbiter because we have this LV909 engine which is a great little orbital engine. So we'll put a fuel tank on here and then we'll pick the LV909. That's not the LV909. What am I doing? There's the LV909. This is a great little orbiter engine. So it's a perfect, I'm, I'm really happy that I'm testing this. I haven't unlocked it yet. And so now what we have is a little orbiter that uh, will make this vessel a little bit more versatile. It won't be completely dependent just upon the first stage in order to do whatever it is it needs to do. Now, although I now have well over an 18 ton vessel mass limit, I am still limited by the part count and pretty soon I realized that that was going to mean I wasn't going to be able to put this science package on there no matter uh, plenty of opportunity later to collect science from low curve in orbit. Now the last part that we do have to test are the stack decouplers, the 1.25 meter stack decouplers uh, on the launch pad so that's pretty easy. I'm going to put them on the bottom of these uh, of the boosters like this and then make these sort of go off right at the beginning when I stage um, I did that ended up pushing up the cart count over 30 so I do have to end up doing some further tweaking but I think uh, having these as sort of you know part of a launch system at the bottom work really well and then as soon you know the first thing I'm going to be doing is firing the boosters and staging those decouplers on the bottom um, and that should knock off that contract easy enough. Now you can see up there at the top, I have a total delta V of 3,762 meters per second, according to Kerbal Engineer. I'm, I'm hoping that'll be enough to get me into orbit and get me back down. And uh, But the, the, remember that I can't fire that orbital engine, that LV909 engine, until I'm suborbital and above 70 kilometers. So I'm going to need this, the the solid rocket boosters and that first stage 
to get me suborbital. So, uh, you know, that's going to be the plan. So that's why I got 2,937 meters per second uh, in the first and into second stages. Hopefully that'll be enough. But of course, this is going to have to go through some simulations. You know, even if you don't like the time element from Kerbal Construction Time, I do, I, I love this simulation mode. Um, I mean, I know you can do reverts and all that kind of stuff, but it's nice to s clearly separate your testing phase from your in-game actual mission. Whoa! <laughs> those were the, uh, those, uh, stack decouplers. Oh, well, the contract went great, so it still works. It was a dramatic send-off for Jeb. So again, remember the way to do these ascents um, is to just knock, soon after takeoff, knock the, uh, the vessel over about maybe five degrees or so towards the east. And then for the most part, you're just following that prograde vector. You don't want to veer too far from the prograde vector. That's the problems I've been getting into if you were watching my previous video. Um, I was having issues with ascent, issue with control, but you know, uh, I'm doing much, much better with control because I have now actual control surfaces on those tail fins, thanks to some of the upgrades that I have been getting. And the idea is, is to pitch over very slowly, trying to hit about 45 degrees pitch at around the 10 kilometers, so you can see I could probably be pitching a little bit quicker than what I am doing, but I'm not doing too badly. There we go. I'm about, about 45 degrees now and about 14 kilometers altitude. You can see I'm trying to push the vessel over. But the thing that I'm starting to learn is, you know, it's more important to stay close to that prograde vector than it is to get the ideal ascent profile. Right now I am very close to the ascent profile I want. I'm at about 15 degrees, no, 25 degrees pitch. What am I saying? 25 kilometer altitude. Again, now I'm just mostly just following that prograde vector, not really trying to do much of anything at all and watching my apoapsis. And once it's a little above 70 kilometers, that might be a little bit too close. I think I'll give myself a bit more thrust. That should be better. I mean, you will lose some of that maximum height, that apoapsis, just because of uh, air resistance, because I am still in the atmosphere. And that last little burst burned up the remaining fuel that was in that ascent stage. So, but that's okay. It did its job. It got us up into space, so we can now ditch it. And now it's up to our orbital engine to finish off the job. Uh, looking at this now, I have no idea why I turned myself normal. <laughs> I think it's just out of habit from all these suborbital trajectories. So we fire up the LV-909, um, and you can see that contract is now go green. Now it's just a matter of seeing we can get ourselves in orbit. Yeah, I didn't have to do a normal like that, because as soon as I fired up this engine, that uh, first stage is going to be behind me and it's going to re-enter. There's no way we'll ever crash into it again. So that was just silliness on my part. Now I'm doing this completely f from uh, the normal mode. I'm not going to go to map mode. This is the way I like to do it. I like to look at Kerbal Engineer and what I'm really looking at is my two things. I'm looking at my time to apoapsis and I am keeping that number just a little bit above zero. And I am also looking at my periapsis height. Once that above, is above 70 kilometers, I am in orbit. And I'm adjusting my pitch and my throttle to keep that time to apoapsis around where I want it. And I'm closing in. It's just about there. And that's it. That's an orbit. Unfortunately, that's an orbit in simulation mode, so it doesn't count towards my gain just yet. I still have 94 meters per second of delta V left, which is more than enough for me to deorbit this thing to get it back into the atmosphere and get Jeb back home. But it remains to be seen if I can then do this for real. Now, although I made it, my fuel rations were a little bit tight, so I thought I might just beef this up a little bit. Um, I took the parachutes off of the boosters that frees up some parts because and then you know So I don't recover the boosters no big deal And then I went with three boosters down here on the bottom in addition to free up some parts 
I'm only going to put one of these stacked decouplers down here on the bottom because that's all I got to test. I mean, why put three of them down there? So this is a little bit beefier. Um, I, ha I have a beefier first and second stage and also my orbiter. I went with less fuel on the orbiter. Um, this should be a lot more, should easily, I mean, look at that. 3,925 meters per second of delta V altogether, 3,100 meters of delta V in the SRVs in the ascent stage. This should be a piece of cake, even if I don't, even if I do a less than perfect ascent. All that's left to do is to tweak the thrust to weight ratios. Again, I want to have a thrust to weight ratio at launch of around 1.65 and a little bit higher. You know, you, you, when you go to that second stage and fire up that swivel engine, uh, I got a thrust to weight ratio about 1.85. Um, and that way I can just go full throttle and not be playing with the throttle while I'm also playing with ascent. So we'll just put this in the building queue and move on to other things, namely the launching of the Curcury 3 once again, doing another one of these uh, tourist contracts. Don't worry, I won't spend too much time with it because I've done my third one, third one of these. So, you know, I'll just show you that I've done it and that's going to be it. But a little thing I did a little bit new is I thought I was really working Jeb and Valentina a little bit too hard. Um, you know, these missions are starting to come closer and closer together. So I thought it was time for me to hire another pilot. So we go over here to the, uh, the Academy. I don't know why that took me. I'll take a look at the pilot here, and uh, we'll pick the one with the least amount of stupidity. Again, I want a pilot, so that's going to be Svet, Svetlana? Svetlana, yeah, it's going to be you. Why don't we also take some time to talk about the texture replacement mod. We have this button up here. It's actually really easy to apply textures to the various Kerbals. Um, the suit textures, I, I have a list of the textures uh, that I have installed at the back. Uh, I added on the uh, the numbers on the suit texture, so I, I don't know. Each Kerbal is going to be numbered. So this is uh, Pilot going to be zero two. Uh, those are just those can be added on the numbers with just any imaging editing software. That's easy enough. And as I go through the textures, I do have to look for textures for the new female models. There are some coming out now. Uh, so let's see. I'll pick an appropriate one. Svetlana, Svetlana. I think. That kind of sounds Scandinavian to me. I think Svetlana's got to be a blonde. Yeah, we'll go with that. Anyway, on to the mission itself. Oh, you see me do this. This is the exact same Curcury 3 you saw in the last episode, so not to spend much time with that, other than to take note of Svetlana. You know, maybe I should have been using Courage, <laughs> picking the one with the highest Courage rather than the one with the lowest stupidity, because Yes, Atlanta doesn't seem to be enjoying this, and neither does her passenger. But oh well, this went exactly the same as before. It's just about getting it up just above 70 kilometers, uh, then detaching that first stage, re-entering. Um, the only thing I will take note of is once again, uh, my parachutes on that first stage didn't deploy. I really need to investigate well, you know, maybe it's not that big a deal because I should be getting pretty close to being done with these suborbital trajectories once I can consistently start to get Kerbals into orbit. And, and with that, the first stages will be falling very far away from, uh, I won't be, they won't be tracking together like they are here. And uh, the first stages will be going in on their own. Um, either I'll follow them down, I'll show you how I do that once I get around to it, or um, it's uh, I do have the mod stage recovery installed so that if Kerbal uh, KSP takes a stage you know, uh, off, it assumes it's destroyed, stage recovery takes a look at it and goes, uh uh uh, this thing has iron parachutes on it, and it will count uh, it as well, partially recovered. It takes a look at damage, it takes a look at uh, also where you are and gives you back an appropriate amount of funds. But a neat little mod stage recovery, very light little mod too, doesn't cost a lot. Now that recovery marked the end of that play session. 
And between that and this current play session, um, another mod had upgraded, and I also made the decision that uh, I was going to completely remove active texture management from my arsenal of mods, and when I went and checked, that somehow, once again, removed all my contracts from uh, my list of contracts that I had available. So, here I am, once again, repopulating... Um, my list of contracts picking up extra ones i see here i got this remote tech contract now now these are coming up now i have not even upgraded or even unlocked um a pro body yet let alone the appropriate antennas but i definitely want to scoop this one up because i will be setting up a communication yes. network hopefully in not the too distant yes. future so I just went through and repopulated my contracts, but unfortunately what that means is is that ship that I spent all that time designing and test flying and getting into orbit, well, those contracts don't exist anymore, so that's going to necessitate a redesign. So here we have the old Kirk Kirstock 2, and that is now useless. So let's take a look at the contracts that I have now. I have a to test the Mark 55 Thud liquid fuel. Those are the radio, large radio liquid fuel engines and to test them on the surface I have to test the 1.875 stack decouplers in a suborbital trajectory I have to test the Rocklemax brand decoupler while orbiting and I have again to orbit Kerbin and perhaps to beat 2500 meters per second as a speed so that but that's faster than orbital speed so I'll have to see if I can do that one um turned out that I decided not to go for testing the Brocco Max brand decoupler. That's the big 2.5 meter decoupler while in orbit. And I also am not going for the 2,500 meters per second. And I ended up with this very, very tall SRB free uh, rocket for my design to see if I can knock off some of these contracts. As you can see, it has a total delta V of 3,800 meters per second once again i tweak the thrust to weight ratio get it down to 1.67 but the difference is this guy is just single stage no srbs oh we'll have to see how it goes all right we're off and one thing to note right off the bat is this long skinny rocket with all of these fuel tanks connected together gets a pretty serious wobble happening and what's going on here is the uh, SAS needs to be off it, it, it's the two control surfaces that are at the opposite end remember there's the reaction wheels up at the capsule and then the control surfaces that are on the fins and they are in a fight <laughs> right now so this thing has to be flown with SAS turned off but you know what that's not necessarily a bad thing because it gives me an opportunity to talk about doing a real gravity turn. So this time we launch with the SAS turned off. And then we very slightly, again just a few degrees, give it a little bit of a nudge towards the east. And with that accomplished, I want you to take a look at the, the bottom left of your screen and look at my indicators for roll, yaw, and pitch and notice they are completely neutral. Right now I am doing absolutely nothing. I am putting in no inputs whatsoever. This thing is steering completely on its own. It's using gravity and the natural aerodynamics to steer this rocket into um, the ascent profile it's going to use. And the reason why that's happening is because the center of mass is so far forward of the center of lift so when it's tilted over gravity wants to pull it you know over while the aerodynamics on the fins want to uh, keep it going straight and you end up with this slow turning arc this is why this is called a gravity turn and this is the way real rockets ascend now it takes a bit of tweaking you can see here I'm actually fiddling around with the yaw a little bit to tweak my ascent because I'm not falling over quite fast enough but for the most part I'm trying to keep my inputs as neutral as I can with more tweaking on the rocket you can probably get this thing to ascend pretty much 
vertically. The other thing I want to talk about as well is aerodynamic efficiency or atmospheric efficiency. If you take a look over at Kerbal Engineer, my atmospheric efficiency has now dropped down below 50 or 50 percent, around 50 percent. It was in around 80 or 90 percent before. You don't want that to get above 100 percent. And what that's doing is once it's over 100 percent, whoa, 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 I've lost control there a little bit because the atmosphere uh, got uh too thin for the control surfaces on the fins to really have much of an effect. So I started losing control. But what that means is, because the fins are doing very, very little, is I can safely turn on the SAS without getting that crazy wobble in there. And I will thrust a little bit further just to get my apoapsis of above 75 kilometers. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, I was talking about atmospheric efficiency. Um, you if it gets more than 100%, what that means is you're going faster than the terminal velocity of your craft. And that means you are, consider you are expelling a considerable amount of energy pushing that air out of your way. You don't want to do that. Now, a lot of people, they will control thrust on their way up. I find it tough enough just to point the frickin' rocket in the right direction. So that's why I like to control thrust at the bottom. Tweak the thrust so that... Um, I don't, I just have it full thrust all the way up. Does it mean I'm doing the perfectly efficient ascent? No, but it does mean I am not that far off. And in addition, you don't want to thrust so much. Like I was pulling probably towards the end there about three G's. Um, that's enough for poor Jebediah, to be quite honest. I don't want to be pulling many more G's than that. So, you know, for me, put the thrust to weight ratio around 0.65. Full throttle, whole way up, it's plenty efficient enough for, for our purposes. Anyway, we are now in space, and I still even have some fuel. I still have 327 meters per second in that lower stage. I still got over 1,100 meters per second altogether. I'm feeling pretty good about this. And again, it's the same deal as you saw with my last ascent. Um, I'm going to point that rocket, give it a pitch of zero and start thrusting forward, keeping an eye on my time to apoapsis and also keeping an eye on my periapsis height and adjusting pitch and adjusting throttle to keep that time to apoapsis a little bit above zero. Oh, I just ran out of fuel, so we'll ditch that. And that finishes off that contract for the 1.875 meter decoupler. And then it's just thrusting until I get my periapsis above 75 meters per second to achieve my orbit. And this guy ended up costing me about 3,758 meters per second, the ascent, uh, which is a little more expensive, but a little, what was that, about maybe 80 meters per second more expensive than the ascent you saw me do before. So I went back into the vehicle assembly building, tweaked around a little bit, got the uh, total delta V from 38 100 meters per second dead on to 3,846 meters per second. Figured that should give me a little bit more of a comfortable margin. And hopefully I can get this thing into orbit. Hopefully I can also play another round without losing some more contracts. But that is going to have to be for a future episode. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.